episode 10 of Learn Granime 2 and today what I want to show you is executors. Executors are these fancy little buttons with the faders on top and real speak here let's just pull up a picture of the Granime 2 console. So executors are these buttons on here. So faders with buttons on top and buttons below and then these buttons down here are separate executors as well as these button executors underneath the touch screen which are these executors over here which we've been using quite a bit. This what we're seeing right here is called a button executor because it has just a single button and then if we open up the executor section these are regular executors with some more button executors down here. So today I want to show you how you can actually make heavy use of these executors. So first of all, what I want to show you is how you can assign executors. And that's really just assigning something to play back onto the executors. Because remember, the reason why they're called executors is because they will execute your content for you. So they will actually play back a sequence or an effect or even a macro. So there's different types of content that these executors can play back for you. The other thing that executors actually do is provide things like speed masters, rate masters, group masters, playback masters, and all these fancy things, which we will actually take a look at next week. So today, I really just want to talk about how you can assign functionality to your executors, how you can move that around, um, pretty much how you can work with this very, very important playback tool inside of Granime 2. Now, what we saw in the previous episode, and you can download this show file in the video description right now. What we did last week is create the sequence. And what we saw so far is that we always create the sequences inside of these executors. What I also showed you though, is that if we open up the pools, the sequence pools, um, if, if we're storing a queue on top of an executor, all that's happening or all that Granime 2 is doing for us is creating a new sequence in the background. So I can actually go ahead and delete this sequence, but notice how it doesn't affect the sequence pool. So if I go ahead and delete that, yes, I just confirmed that I want to delete this executor because it still uh, had some output running, but essentially the sequence pool is staying the same because you can delete and move around your executors without affecting the content that's inside of these executors. So the easiest way to assign something to an executor is actually go assign, click on a pool object, in this case a sequence, and then hit on an empty executor slot. And now if we press go here, yep, that should be the sequence that we created from the episode on the through keyword. Let's assign another executor. Just go assign something else here and assign something else here. And then we can see, yep, we got some beautiful content. Awesome. Now, if you had to always take this route of having to set up a pool window and then having to find the right sequence, I mean, that will be sort of tedious, right? So there's actually another way uh, that will automatically show you how and what content you can assign to an executor. So just go assigned and click on an empty executor directly. And now if we go up to function, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we can see all the beautiful things that we can actually assign and play back with this executor. So we can see the content type empty. I mean, that means it's empty, right? Then we have sequences, effects, macros, and timers. What we just did is essentially assign a sequence. If we click on sequence, we can see all of our sequences. Uh, so here we can just select one, then hit the X button. And you can see that we successfully assigned the sequence. Same goes for um, effects. We can see a list of our effects over here. So that's a really easy way of assigning these executors. Now let's go inside of our executors and I'm actually going to go to the big ones over here. So let's first check out what this beautiful executor is doing over here. You can see that I have a toggle button, which allows me to turn this effect on and off. I have a master button, which essentially just dims up or down the intensity 
and then I have an on button and an off button. So this actually is the two halves of the toggle button. Now if I click on assign and then click on this executor, you can see if I do that, then I'm also able to change the assignment of this executor so I could also just go empty. But that's not what we wanted to do, so let's just go whoops, and there it's back. So first thing I want to show you is how you can actually change these buttons around. So what you can do up here is just click on these buttons and turn them all empty. You could even turn off this fader. So now you have a fader that does nothing. You have buttons that do nothing. Uh, you know, you can create an executor that can actually do nothing. Uh, so over here, what you can do is you can actually assign different uh, functions to this executor. And let's just, I don't know, go flash here and then put this to toggle. And then over here, let's get, just go pause. So now we have all these different functions. I can, for example, hit flash and that will set the master value of this executor to 100% and also play back the content. I can also go toggle. Now what's interesting is that right now I can't change the intensity anymore because if I move my fader around, you can see that it's actually going slower or uh, faster and vice versa. So it's faster if you turn it up and slower if you turn it way down. So that's really cool because like that you can actually go assign and change what these buttons and faders do. Um, and that's also pretty quick if you're quick with the, with um, your command keywords. So that's buttons and the fader. One thing that you also should note is that if you go assign on a sequence, for example, uh, you can see there's a lot more options when it comes to sequence. So all of these content types, they have different uh, buttons and faders that you can assign and what you want to do there is really just read up in the manual I will post a link in the video description on all the different buttons that you can use and all the different faders that you can use um, you really have to play around with that a little bit to kind of get a hang for it next up what I want to show you is something that I don't actually use but it might be useful to you uh, let's just delete an executor this one over here and let's just go into this executor over here and change its width. So if three buttons and a fader aren't enough for you, you can actually increase the width of that executor. And then like that, you have more button slots and two faders or three faders uh, that you can actually assign to this one uh, piece of content. And what we did so far is always use the assign button. You can actually left click on this tile up here, and then you also get this window. So here what we can do is actually change the width. And it's sort of strange because it's really more functionality than I ever needed. So right here, we actually see all the functionality in one window. And now that I'm saying this, this is actually, I think, a good way uh, to test out the different types of faders and buttons that you can actually, or uh, that you can assign to um, an executor. So now we can turn up the master and what's cool is that we have the speed right here. So we can actually turn it way low. See this fader over here doesn't even have a functionality. Um, we can we can try out the, the fade button, see if that changes anything. And that's also sort of the funny thing. I can't really tell the difference. So some options you will actually try out and it doesn't really do much. Uh, so in that case, just go over to uh, the MA2 manual and figure out what the hell uh, that option means. Another cool option when it comes to effects is this thing right here. I mean, pause. Yeah, that might be cool. But one thing that's really cool is the learn button. So right here, if you have music, uh, you can definitely try out the learn button to match your effects speed to what you're hearing. But you know, don't despair. This button is really inaccurate. And also the readings that you will get over here are really, really coarse. I'm a drummer and I've used this button before and it works to a certain degree, but more often than not, you will actually uh, get huge jumps in this speed just because you tapped it slightly wrong. It's, it's sort of strange. But this is how you can change the width 
of an executor. Just click down here in these um, with columns and then you can actually um, you know, assign all of these different functionalities. And also keep in mind that if you, for example, find a good layout for your executor, what you can totally do is keep the button and the fader layout and then just select a different effect, right? So that's perfectly doable. Another thing that could help you to actually preserve a button layout that you like is just go ahead and copy an executor. And now let's go in here and assign this a different effect. And now you have two different effects, but you have the same exact button layout. So like that, you can actually work out a layout that you like. And um, I think that's a cool trick because you can actually, let's just delete this. With effects especially, it can be really helpful to have a speed fader and we'll see next week how you can even assign a speed master which gives you even greater control but so this layout is sort of cool right because we can actually go and flash this thing but we can also go we have an off button we have an on button we have a black to turn it off temporarily and we have a speed master so here we can actually go and uh really go nuts and let me just while I'm at it, let me just refine this a little bit. So I want to have the on here. I actually want to have a lure in there. And then let's just have a black over here. Where is it? Black. So now we can actually turn this executor off or turn this effect off while we hold down the learn button, uh, the black button, sorry. And we can use the learn button to adapt the effect to the music. We can make it as bright or as dim as possible or as we like it. And that should be a cool button layout. So next time you want to use that for an effect, just go copy. And here we go. We have the same layout just with a different piece of content. Go, go. And now we can see these are overriding each other, but only because they're defined on the same set of fixtures. All right, and so the last thing I want to show you is how you can actually move these around. The second to last thing. So you can just go move and then um, move these to a different slot. What's really important though is if you open up this masters button over here, then you can actually select different fader pages. And that's a really important tool to have a ton of executors available for you, but be very, very cautious with this tool. I personally find it very, very hard if you're in a live situation to remember what page you had a certain uh, executor on. So that can actually help you, but it can also be a real hassle. If you do want to move an executor to another page though, then what you want to do is go move and then executor. In this case, it's 11 but it's page one. So just go 1.11 at, let's put it to page two, two dot, uh, let's put it in the first slot, 2.1. So now if we go to the master section and turn up the fader page, that's exactly where our executor has ended up in. Also keep in mind when you want to move around multiple executors to reorganize your setup, make sure to use the through keyword. So what I want to do now is actually move all of these executors to page three, but I want them to start from this second block of executors. So let's go back to fader page one. And now what you want to do is move executor one for page one point one. So this is the first executor. This is page one dot first executor through one Point seven. So now we're selecting this range over here at page three dot starting from executor six. And I'll just go please. And now you can see that um, by going fader page up twice, um, these executors are now on the third page. If you kind of mess something up and you need to reverse an option, uh, remember, you can always use the oops keyword, um, another one of these phonetic 
key commands, just like you always have to say please for the console to do something for you. This one is actually kind of funny because, you know, if you just go, whoops, just use that button. <laughs> All right. And lastly, um, and that will be even more relevant next week. But if you have an executor that you always want to be visible on all of the pages. So let's take a look. This is the all thing. Let's say that's a very important executor that you always need to have ready at your hands. What you want to do is go and fix that executor. So just click on fix. It will be yellow. And now if we go up in our fader pages, you can see that this executor will always be there. If you want to unfix it, just go fix and click on it again. But in general, what you can do is um, have a part of your selectors or part of your executors, uh, could be fixed executors that you always need to have visible. Um, like that, you can actually mitigate some of the problems that you have when you work with multiple pages. Um, it's a perfectly valid tool and the MA2 consoles are definitely built for using multiple executor fader pages because they have motor faders. Um, my point is just that it will increase the complexity of using your show file and that's something you always need to keep an eye out um, for because in a live situation, complexity is your biggest enemy, I think. Um, and so you want to keep it simple. Just use that if you really have a good idea of how you can make use of these multiple fader pages. But in general, just go ahead and enjoy this new tool in your toolbox. Executors are very, very flexible and they offer a lot of options. Next week, we're going to dive even deeper with executors and I'm going to show you executor options and the different kind of special masters that you can use. And those are um, a lot of fun, but they're also part of why this console is so complex to use. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Whether you're on YouTube, on the channel, hi, subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Or on the Facebook group, hello. I'm happy to have a wild mix of people here in this Facebook group. And if you go like, hey, I'm also wild. I want to be part of that mix. Go down to the video description and join our Facebook group through the link. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this learning journey with me. My name is Jonas, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.